Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. Today we're going to talk about how to calculate the electric field from more than one point charge. So here's an example of what I'm talking about. Let's say I have two charges here. Let's say a positive six microcoulomb charge here and a negative four microcoulomb charge here. And what I'd like to know is what is the net electric field at point P, which perfectly forms an equilateral triangle with the other two charges. So first, if we know it's an equilateral triangle, I immediately know the angle of each side is 60 degrees. And the bigger thing that I wanna say, if we wanna calculate the electric field, the total electric field, it's going to come down to a concept known as superposition. Superposition just means that we need to consider every charge in this problem separately. So for instance, you see the positive six charge here? I need to calculate that electric field, I'll call it E1, and then I'm gonna find the electric field from the minus charge, I'll call that E2, and then I add them together. So in other words, E total, the total electric field equals E1 plus E2. Keep in mind that you need to split them up into their X and Y components for each. So in other words, it will look more like E1X plus E2X plus E1Y plus E2Y. I need to add up the X and Y components separately. So let's find E1 first. That actually will be the harder one. Let me just draw it again down here so I have more room. Here's point P. Here's the six microcoulomb charge. Remember that micro just means it's gonna be 10 to the minus sixth power. And it looks like I'm gonna to have to break this field into its components. We're gonna have an X component and a Y component. I'll call it E1X and E1Y. I know there's a 60 degree angle here. And the last thing I wanna ask before we get into the math is which way will the electric field point at point P? So remember that since this is a positive charge and electric fields always point away from positive charges and towards negative charges, I know my electric field is going to point down and to the left. And again, it's gonna have those same components. Even though I'm drawing this arrow down here, I'm gonna have the exact same components. I'm gonna have E1X pointing to the left and E1Y pointing down. And again, everything's based on that 60 degree angle right there. So first what I'm gonna say is E1, the, the total, is equal to KQ over R squared. That's the equation for electric field due to point charges. Where K is nine times 10 to the ninth, my Q is my six times 10 to the minus six charge divided by the distance. I forgot to give a distance. Let's say each of these sides are separated by a distance of five centimeters, five centimeters, five centimeters. So that means my radius, my R is gonna be five, actually 0 0.05, remember, if I gave it to you in centimeters, we need to convert that to meters. So you divide that by 100 to get 0 0.05. And if I plug this in my calculator, then I will get 2.16 times 10 to the seventh power. The units are gonna be Newtons per Coulomb. And keep in mind, this is like the total, this is the hypotenuse. I still need to break it up into its horizontal and vertical components. And to do that, let me build my triangle again. So I'm saying this is 2.16 times 10 to the seventh, the hypotenuse of my right triangle. E1X is here, E1Y is here and that is 60 degrees. So if I want to find E1x, E1x is just going to be the hypotenuse, 2.16 times 10 to the seventh, times the cosine of 60 degrees, and it's cosine because it's the adjacent leg, and cosine uses adjacent. And when I plug that in my calculator, I'll get 1.08 times 10 to the seventh. This is x hat, and let me be clear, it's negative x hat because it points to the left, as we can see right here. Then for E1Y, that is just gonna be 2.16 times 10 to the seventh times the sine of 60 degrees. And let's see what I get for that. That will give us 1.87 times 10 to the seventh. This is Y hat, and again, it's negative because it points down, as we can see right there. So now we have two of our components. We got E1X and E1Y. Now we just need to find E2x and E2y. So to do that, I'm just gonna redraw my picture again. Here's point P. The second charge over here is a negative charge. It's negative four microcoulombs. 
this distance is still five centimeters and I'm just gonna plug into the equation to find E2, the total electric field, before I split it up into components. So for that, it's just going to be K, Q over R squared again. K is nine times 10 to the ninth. Q is gonna be four times 10 to the minus six. Now I'm writing positive four. I know the charge is negative, but when I do my point charges in electric field equations, I do not worry about positives and negatives in the equation itself. That's because I know the direction it's gonna point. And the negative sign would just tell me the direction, which I already know. Since it's a negative charge and electric field lines point towards negative charges, I know my electric field E2 is gonna point straight to the right. So I don't even need to worry about positives and negatives now. And then that's divided by radius squared, which is again 0 0.05 squared. If I plug this in my calculator, then I will get 1.44 times 10 to the seventh power. And again, the units for that are newtons per coulomb. And keep in mind that if I wanna split this up into my X and Y components, notice it's already pointing straight to the right. And I know straight to the right is the positive X hat direction. So actually I can just say E2X is that same number, 1.44 times 10 to the seventh X hat. And E2Y is just gonna be zero because it's not going up or down at all. This arrow isn't pointing up or down with any component. So now when I say E total, the total electric field, I just need to add my previous three answers. So in other words, E1X was negative 1.08 times 10 to the seventh X hat plus 1.44 times 10 to the seventh X hat and then minus 1.87 times 10 to the seventh, that was our Y hat. So therefore, I'll get a final answer of positive 3.6 times 10 to the sixth X hat minus 1.87 times 10 to the seventh Y hat. Now this is a perfectly acceptable answer if they want your answer in X hat and Y hat notation. If they want their answer as, let's say the magnitude, if you wanna find the magnitude of your electric field, then you just have to do the Pythagorean theorem sum, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So that means 3.6 times 10 to the sixth squared plus, doesn't matter that it's negative, when you square it, it'll become positive anyway, so I'll ignore that. Squared equals C squared. So the left side of this equation will become 3.6 times 10 to the 14th equals C squared. And then we just take the square root of that, and I'll get a final answer of 1.90 times 10 to the seventh. That's my total electric field and the units are newtons per coulomb. And again, that's the magnitude. And if I was interested in finding the angle, I would say, hey, the X component was 3.6 times 10 to the sixth, and the Y component was negative 1.87 times 10 to the seventh. And so this angle right here in my right triangle would be my angle. And for that, I just have to write tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. So 1.87 times 10 to the seventh over 3.6 times 10 to the sixth. Again, I'm ignoring the negative signs because I know already which way this triangle's oriented. And then to solve for theta, you would take the arctangent of this. And I will get an answer of theta equals 79.1 degrees, and that's below the x-axis. And there's my angle. So that's it for the triangle of charges and solving for electric fields. And again, we use the concept of superposition to do that. And now let's look at one more. This time it's going to be a perfect square of charges. I have a positive charge here, a positive charge here, a negative charge here, and a positive charge here. And we will say all four charges have value of Q, Q, negative Q, and Q, where Q is equal to two coulombs. I know that it's a perfect square, so I will draw that. And let's say they all have side lengths of three meters away from each other. And this time I would like to find the total electric field at this point right in the middle. I'll call it O, at point O. So again, we're going to be using superposition. And real quick, if I were to consider which way the electric field will point for all four of these charges, and let me label these one, two, three, and four. I know that for charge one, since the electric field must point away from positive charges, it's gonna point down and to the right. For charge two, I know it's going to point again away from the positive charge, so that will be down and to the left. Q3 is negative and electric fields 
point towards negative charges, so that will point down into the left. And then charge four, since it's positive, again will point away, so up and to the left. So I think I can tell just looking at my figure that my net electric field will point down into the left. And furthermore, in case you're curious, yes, charge one and charge four here will cancel each other out only because they have the exact same value of charge Q and Q. So that means I really only need to calculate my electric field from charges two and three and we'll be good to go. So let's find the electric field from charge two. Again, that's gonna be K, Q over R squared. So K is nine times 10 to the ninth. Q is my charge, which is positive two coulombs, although even if it was negative, I'd write it positive anyway. The radius is tricky. I'll tell you this, it's not three, because the radius is really the distance from charge two to the center point O, which is this distance right there. And to find that, we're gonna to have to use Pythagorean theorem. So let me construct this right triangle here. Again, here's point O, here's my charge two. And if I make a right triangle out of this, notice that this distance here is not three, but three halves or 1.5, because it's half of that length. And since it's a square and all the sides are proportional, this side will also be 1.5. So to find the magnitude, I have to do 1.5 squared plus 1.5 squared equals c squared. And then 1.5 squared plus 1.5 squared. That's 4.5 equals c squared. The square root of that is 2.12. So that's my distance, 2.12. And yes, we will square that. When I plug that in my calculator, I will get an electric field of 4.00 times 10 to the ninth power. And remember that that has both components in the x and the y direction. So looking back at my main figure here, actually I'll just draw it again. Here's point O. The electric field coming off of charge two points down into the left. And if you think about it, and this is a square, then the x component and the y component will be separated by 45 degrees, again, because it's a perfect square. So that means E2x is going to equal my hypotenuse, 4.00 times 10 to the ninth, times the cosine of 45 degrees, and that's gonna be about 2.83 times 10 to the ninth. And the nice thing about sine of 45 degrees, which is what the y component will be, that is going to be the exact same answer because sine and cosine are identical to each other. So both components are 2.83 times 10 to the ninth. Oh, I forgot to mention, this is negative x hat direction because it points to the left. This is the negative y hat direction because it points downward. The other cool thing I can say is because charge three is exactly the same as charge two, they're both two coulombs, just one's negative, which as we said earlier, just changes the direction. It doesn't change any of the numbers. Then Q3 is going to have the exact same numbers. So that saves me quite a few steps there as well. E3x will also be negative 2.83 times 10 to the ninth x hat. And E3y will also be negative 2.83 times 10 to the ninth y hat. So then when I go to add these together, I would say the total electric field is equal to negative 2.83 times 10 to the ninth x hat minus another 2.83 times 10 to the ninth x hat minus 2.83 times 10 to the ninth y hat minus 2.83 times 10 to the ninth y hat. I plug these values in my calculator and I will get negative 5.66 times 10 to the ninth x hat minus 5.66 times 10 to the ninth y hat. And of course, I can't combine x and y hat together because they're different directions. But if I wanted to find the magnitude, which I kind of do, then again, I would build my right triangle here with the x side being this one and the y side being this one. And I like to ignore the negative signs for the math. And then using a squared plus b squared equals c squared, you're going to end up getting 6.4 times 10 to the 19th equals c squared, and then take the square root of that. And our magnitude will be eight times 10 to the ninth power, and that is in newtons per coulomb. And if you wanted to find the direction, I'm already gonna tell you since these are identical to each other, it's all symmetrical. This is still 45 degrees. The angle is 45 degrees below the negative x axis. 
And there we go. That's how we solve electric field problems when you have more than one point charge and you need to use superposition to solve. Thank you all for watching. My name is Dan the Tutor. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.